uh hello everybody and welcome this is uh sunday february 19th 2023 uh imagine uh you have what seven eight days left to record uh your rpm challenge uh record uh that's so much time <laughs> i bet you're feeling like you have just boundless like end endless time right now uh and i uh anyway it's true you know you can do you, it's time is relative as they say uh and uh today i'm very excited to uh be uh presenting this workshop this is uh not something this, is, this was an idea that uh uh came, well not that uh, was presented to me uh and uh i was just like hell yeah this sounds like a great time um uh felix van dalen uh is joining us here on uh this afternoon also known as uh well under under his rpm projects the wizards of vomit where let's see it and um little bits and little bits is a live coding project that has you know been very popular with the uh, record every month challenge crew uh we've just been like what the hell it's like live coding this sounds so good but how could you code music live uh so but felix approached me by email and said hey would you like me to do a workshop and i was like fuck yeah <laughs> so here we are um felix how are you yeah hi i'm good how are you great great uh i just had a very relaxing sunday and i'm ready to focus and code <laughs> right well i have some code for you excellent great um yeah so well for the people who are joining us um you know uh i'm not paying attention to the chat too much but i will open that now uh, say hello, where are you from? You're tuning in from in the chat. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments or anything, just put them in the chat and I'll try to bring them to Felix at a good moment. Uh, but otherwise, the, the show is all Felix's. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, feel, feel free to ask any questions and interrupt me during the presentation. Okay. I'm happy to answer. Uh, so yeah, we'll be talking about live coding and particularly live coding in tidal cycles. Uh, and this is something I learned about last year during another RPM workshop, actually. So there was this workshop on found sound. I, and I thought it was a really interesting workshop. I, I learned a lot, but there was just a brief mention of something called tidal cycles and live coding. And just a few months before that, I, I kind of had this idea uh, in my head that maybe I could use programming to create music. So, so I wrote, wrote this really stupid small script in Python that could just generate some really ugly sounds. And well, I had fun with it for a week, but I think after that, I just forgot about it. But then during this workshop, I heard Tidal Cycles and I learned about this whole scene of live coding and that there's actually a lot of packages available that you can just use and learn quite easily about. Uh, so yeah, that's how, how I got into tidal cycles and live coding. And I'd really like to share what I've learned over well, the last year. Uh, so a little bit about me. Uh, this is my fourth year that I'm joining the RPM. So previous years I've joined as the Wizards of Fomit, which is like a, a bedroom rock band. Uh, so I play guitar for quite a while, I think about 15 years. Uh, and I also play a bit of drum and do some vocals. Uh, yeah, so that, that's my bedroom rock project. Uh, I also play in a, a regular band with some friends, which is now called the Feet Long Mouse. Uh, and then there's uh, the Little Bits project, which is well, a project where I create music using uh, just code. Uh, well, sometimes some vocals, but all the instrumentals are produced 
solely with code written in tidal cycles. Uh, when I'm not making music, I'm an AI engineer. So I know quite a lot of programming already. And that, that's also where I think this interest came from, from uh, yeah, the intersection of music and writing code. Uh, so yeah, uh, what is live coding? For me, it is uh, when you instruct a computer, like uh, when you input some text into a computer and you use that to instruct how the computer should create some sort of form of art. So it can be visuals or it can be uh, music or it can be the combination of both. Uh, you see, see there's a lot actually, this combination. So there's this thing called an algorithm in, in the scene of live coding where people come together and uh, someone plays their music in a live setting. They write code and the code is actually shown on the screen behind. And there's also some people that write code to create the visuals at the same time. And it's kind of an interesting setting, I think, uh, because you, you can really see what's going on. You can learn from what they are doing. You can build on top of it so so it's a yeah I, I really like this setting of sharing all your ways of making music so i have some examples to give you a bit of a feel what life coding can bring uh so i wanted to start with a example it's uh let's see i think this one is quite uh relatively easy to understand. So here you see someone typing in some code. Uh, and at some point you hear some sounds. So you should be able to hear some sounds. Uh, so here one one track is defined to be playing around uh, in a loop. And on the other half of the screen, this person is writing code to create visuals. Uh, so if you scroll a bit, then at some point, you see the visuals appearing. I think it's a really cool combination. Uh, so. Wow, both at the same time. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool thing. So, so you can actually uh, connect those two to each other as well to pick up on what is the audio doing and change the visualization at the same time. So there, there's lots of interesting things to be done with Go. And this was kind of a, well, a relatively easy part, part of code that can be understood. But then I have this example of Moist Piece, who is really doing a lot of complex things. So I'm not sure I understand everything what's happening here, but there's a lot of code. <laughs> but there's also a lot of interesting music. Uh, so if I can scroll around. You can hear that the music is really changing very quickly. There's also quite some interesting visualizations going around. Oh my God, they're poor press processors. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he needs a, a strong computer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so here I have one last example of an actual algorithm in a library. Uh, so you see, one person is responsible for making the music. He's writing the code here on the screen below. Uh, and I think this person is writing the code for the visualizations. I think it's, I think it's really cool that you can just see what's going on and what's it's writing. Uh, and actually, the, the person writing the code here is uh, the, the original maker of uh, Tidal Cycles. So Tidal Cycles is the, the program where I live code in. Uh, this person was the one who created uh, it. Again, yes. So what is Tidal Cycles? Uh, it's a live coding environment where you can write algorithmic patterns. It may sound a bit abstract, but I will show you what, what that means exactly later on. Uh, so, so I'll just go through a few slides and then at some point I will switch to actually live coding and showing showing you how it works and how you work with title cycles. Uh, but what title cycles basically does, it, 
interprets the the text you write uh which is written along a certain format that title cycles can understand uh, and it will interpret it and forward it to another piece of software and then that piece of software will play the sound uh, and title cycle is open source so you can actually see all the code that's used to uh, build title cycles and you can modify it if you want and if if you have some coding understanding uh, but it's actually designed and used by many people who have no experience in coding at all so so you need need to only learn about title cycles and not really about programming and as they say it themselves it's it can be used to quickly create complex patterns from simple ingredients and i think this is really true you can already with a few things uh create super complex things uh that well I will, I will show you what, what it means exactly, but I, I really agree with their quote. So how does it work? You you type in some text in your editor, uh, you run it, and then it, well, it will be sent to the title cycles library and then to some other software. Uh, and then it plays back your sound. Uh, so the thing I want to focus on today is just the text that you write that will be interpreted. So uh, I, I have some links uh, where you can see how to install title cycles. Uh, I, I didn't want to go through that process today, but uh, if, you, if you want to install it and you encounter any problems, then you can contact me in the Discord. Uh, but I think the instructions are pretty clear. And if you want to get started really quickly, there's also a version in the browser, which is kind of, it's very similar to title cycles with some differences, but it's you don't have to install anything. Uh, so here we are at title cycles and the text that you write to create sounds. So here in this screenshot, you see some text that you can run in title cycles and it will actually make some sounds. Uh, and I will show you what, what it sounds like in a bit but what it does is it uh gets a bass drum and a snare drum instruction and it will just play this in a loop infinitely and since there are two sounds uh it will spread out over uh, a cycle evenly so you get a bass drum a snare drum then a bass drum then a snare drum until you stop it so i'll just switch to my title cycles text editor uh, and here you see this same piece of code so you see d1 which is like the track number so you can run multiple things at the same time uh, oh wow yeah yeah wow. and here i say well, I, I want the sound, and the sound should be bass drum, snare drum. And if I then press Control Enter, then you should be hearing the bass drum and snare drum. It's got a beat. <laughs> yeah. So, so one interesting interesting thing about tidal cycles, which is I think kind of counterintuitive compared to more conventional ways of making music, is that when you add another note to your uh, input, then the time signature changes. So here we have bass drum, snare drum, so two half measure, or well, it divides it in over a measure and both into halves. Uh, but here you get thirds. So you get, it will speed up. The length of the cycle is constant. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a waltz. <laughs> so I can I can add more things to it. So now it will speed up even more. And it will get kind of strange because it's a seven. <laughs> yeah, so so I think this for me this took quite some time to get used to it because it 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 can get quite strange easily, but I think that's one of the powers of tidal cycles really because it's really easy to make strange things and 
it's also really cool to make strange things. It's it's really easy to find new types of music to make. Mm. So that's one of the things I, I really like about Tidal Cycles. I think I think also when I compare it to playing the guitar, mm -hmm. it's really easy to to get kind of stuck inside the same patterns and it gets hard to think about making new things. But with Tidal Cycles, I, I feel like I've have half a way to really easily get that into a stage where I can create things that I didn't really imagine beforehand. So at that point, I, I kind of also lost what, so I, I don't really know what to expect when I, when I have a seventh measure or maybe when I have a 24th measure, I don't know. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> but but that, then you can be surprised and sometimes you can be surprised in a good way. So, so that, that's, I think, a pretty cool thing about Tidal Cycles. Hmm. Uh, so, so one more thing about this uh, bass drum, snare drum. So I can run it over here, and then there is some other piece of instructions, which is called the set CPS. So this stands for cycles per second. So in this case, I have 0 0.8 cycles per second. If I uh, increase it to 1, then this will become faster. So I can change it. 0 0.8 become slower even slower so I'll keep it 0 0.8 for now but this is kind of how, how tidal cycles works very basically uh, and I have this command here hush if you run this then everything stops so I can run the seventh cycle again and then push it and <laughs> everything stops right it just yeah if you accidentally run everything on the page <laughs> yeah yeah well you you cannot really run everything at once then you get a whole lot of error uh, messages oh, okay but, uh so so you can run one line or a line with multiple so there are there are ways to run multiple lines to run this at the same time but in this case it doesn't really make sense to run this all at once because then you just override what has happened already on track one so so i can, I can run this one and then add the the third note and it will just replace whatever was here with this uh yeah so so that's basically how, how you can do live coding uh but i wanted to dive a bit deeper into writing some more complex patterns. So, so I have this pattern over here and I will go through it in a bit. I just want to show you what it sounds like. So there, there's quite a lot of things going on here and I have worked it i've copied it here as well and i thought maybe a good way to show you how it works is to go to a really complex example and break it down bit by bit maybe this was not a good idea at all but <laughs> we'll see we'll see yeah, there's we'll only see. one way to find it out you know <laughs> so so i've i've broken it down into pieces and and i think it, it's quite understandable if you look at it in in pieces so you have this d1 which just specifies which number uh, of track you want to play it on. So I can play it on D1, D2, D3. Uh, if I run it on all those tracks at the same time, then it will just become louder, but I can play different things on different tracks. So I will show you this in the editor later. Uh, the next part is something called After Effects. And I, I will tell you a bit about, I will tell you about each part in the next slides. So we have After Effects, we have the notes, the instrument specification, and then some direct effects. Uh, and when I just ran this piece of code, then it will play it back in a loop infinitely or in, until you shut down your computer or when you, when you press her. <laughs> when, when the sun dies. Yeah, then it will probably stop. Heat death of the universe. <laughs> 
<laughs> etc. Yeah. Uh, so so we'll play these notes that we specified. So so it's just a regular C, a regular D, A, and G. Uh, and in this case, it uses the super vibe instrument. Uh, so that's the instrument you just heard. And these four notes will be spread out over the cycle, or you can kind of see a cycle as a measure. So it spreads out over the measure equally, so you get quarter notes. Um, so I'll first go, well, we, we talked about this track number, but I wanted to talk a bit more about this uh, sound part or instrument part. So you can use two different kind of instruments. You have samples, which are just pre-recorded wave files, which are stored in a folder on your system. And you just uh, instruct title cycles to play one of the sounds that are in that folder. Uh, and the folder would be called super vibe. So that, that's how the title cycles knows which file to play. And a different type of instrument is a synthesizer. So it's generated on the fly with a definition that is well written in code. Uh, and I don't really want to go into a, a lot of detail on how you define these synthesizers because they're quite complex, but there are a lot of predefined synthesizers and also a lot of synthesizers that you can just find on the internet. Uh, so that's the instrument part. And I will go into even a bit more detail later in the live coding part. For now, uh, I wanted to look at this uh, part that is in between double quotes. So uh, you specified the notes here. And there's also another so you kind of specify two things at once. You specify the notes, but you also specify with which rhythm you want to play. Uh, so, so if I add another note, then it will be will sound different rhythm, rhythmically as well as the notes. Uh, and this this text between double quotes is called mini notation, and it's used quite a lot on different places inside title cycles. So, so you can actually also apply this to uh, the effects or well, you could apply it to the sound as well. And then you get, well, it gets complicated quite easily when you combine it, but uh, you can add rhythm, rhythm to your effects kind of. Uh, but I'll show this later as well. <laughs> so, so then we have these effects. So, so you first specify the name of the effect and then you specify the value. So here I have room, which is the same as reverb basically. And then I say the amount of reverb is 0 0.2. Uh, and you can just specify the number or you can also put it in between brackets. So you use this when, um, when you want the piece of code to be evaluated before uh, passing it through to the next function. So when putting this in between brackets, it first calculates what is one divided by seven, and then it passes it to this function delay time. And for, for this, I, I think you could also put something like 0 0.14 and then uh, be done with the brackets. Instead of can... having the calculation, <laughs> a way to calculate. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, one seven is maybe a bad example because it's it's already quite hard to think what what the number should be. But when you have one fourth, then you could just put zero point twenty five. But brackets can be quite useful. So I have some examples where where you can really uh, put complex things inside these brackets to make the sound more uh, very have more variation over time. So something we'll we'll see later as well. So then moving to the after effects. So it's it's kind of an effect similar to the ones below, except that these ones are 
evaluated or applied after everything to the right of this dollar sign has been uh, calculated and evaluated. So uh, in this case, you have um, every four. So every fourth cycle, I want the, the, the thing that came out of here to be reversed. And this is quite powerful. You can do quite a lot of interesting things. Uh, and I think this this kind of effect applies more to changing the pattern. And this these effects more are more used to change the sound. So this was the breakdown. I will now go to the live coding environment and we'll see some examples to to give to make to make it a bit more sensible and understandable yeah now that we know everything we we can we can just we can just go coding <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh, so I'm, first, I'm not lost i'm not lost oh good if, if there are any questions to, then do tell me i will uh i am Thanks. totally lost just to be clear, <laughs> but, yeah. I, but not, not in a, not in a way that it's like, uh, anyway, I'm on my way to understanding, which is really exciting. Yeah. I think, I think this is quite a complex example, but now we know a lot of things that, that we can encounter in a pattern, but it's definitely not necessary to make it this complex. So, so I will show some, uh, easier less complex examples, but still let, let me know if there are questions. Okay, I will. Uh, so first thing I wanted to show is if you run different things on uh, on different tracks. So this one was on track one, and here I have something on track two. So this is bass drum, hi-hat, snare drum, hi-hat. And I will just play at the same time if I run it both. So, so that's how you go about uh, D1, D2. I think you can go up to D16 by default. Usually when, when you're at 16, then it's a wall of sound. Uh, so here you see uh, a quite a, a bit more understandable piece of code. So we run something on track two and we specify that we want to play the sound Auto, so I can show you what it sounds like. So it's, I'm not sure how to specify it. Maybe it's like a kick, <laughs> snare. Something I was hoping it's going to be something. Uh, the craft, craft work. It was a craft with uh, autobahn. Ah. <laughs> da, 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 da. Da, da, da. But well, this is this is lovely too. So so the sound we just heard heard it actually comes from a folder called auto if i can find it so yeah here is auto there there are something like 11 samples here and if i play it then you hear the same as okay. we heard before so this is the first sample there's a second sample and a third one so if i go back to here, I can specify which of the files it should play. So I can say it should play the zeroth one. So that means the first one in most programming languages. So this will sound just the same as this. But when I specify one, then it will move to the second file. And I can go on like this. I can also uh, pull this from out of the sound and move it to something called a number. So, so it's kind of similar to note, uh, except it specifies which file to play and not which note to play. So this should do the same as, as this. Uh, and similar to notes, I can also put multiple numbers here. So we'll play this in a three thirds measure. 
And I can just keep on adding things. And it will get faster. Maybe more interesting as well. I think it's pretty interesting oh, already. Yes, yes. Probably, I think there's this really deep sounding sample in there that, that really helps. 7 4 drum and bass or something. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we could make 7 4 drum and bass if we want. Uh, uh, I, have a, I have a question uh, the, from uh, yeah. from YouTube. Mikey Hogan asks, um, why are uh why are after effects def defined before the instrument settings does that make sense uh yeah so so i think it's kind of how how this syntax works so so if i go to this uh pattern then uh you have this dollar sign which basically means uh first evaluate everything to the right of it and then apply whatever is to the left of it. So uh, it's kind of kind of a rule. And so if if I call it after effects, then I get maybe it would be more logical to place it behind it. But yeah, th this is this is how this dollar sign what kind of is the meaning of the dollar sign evaluate everything to the right and then apply it put it into this function. Okay. So does, does that make I sense? Think, I think I get it. I think I get it. Um, yeah. That, yeah, that's clear to me. All right. Uh, so I had this um, example to start with, the bass drum, hi-hat, snare drum, hi-hat. And we can give this some more rhythmic structure by using square brackets so the square bracket is basically subdividing this order node into a, a new uh piece of time that should be uh should contain the notes spread out evenly as well so in this case we have quarter note and then two eight notes and then two quarter notes again so it it sounds maybe a bit complex but it's really powerful to work with so in this case you have the bass drum then two hi-hats but the hi-hats play twice as fast because they are in square brackets and then you have the snare drum and hi-hat and you can also nest oh god oh yes here we go yeah <laughs> yeah you can you can take it as far as you want so you have bass drum Hi hat, and then oh, this so part right. is spread out into two even smaller parts. So, so these ones are sixteen notes, and it sounds quite nice. And I, I can I can take it as far as as I as I like. Well, I think oh yeah, that sounds point, like. Bicephalus bouncing ball by uh, Apex Twin. <laughs> the, the, the never like yeah. accelerating rhythm. Well, you you can make it as as extreme as you want. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have an example of extreme actually. Because another way to write what we had before. So the uh, hi hat that was divided over 60 notes. So this part, I can write this instead of square brackets, I can use an, an asterisk. So this is exactly the same. But I oh, can- Oh, so it's what? Oh, okay, yeah, I see. So it, yeah, times yeah, so two, it's times two. two time, yeah. yeah, two times the hi-hat, but make it, uh, put it in the same amount of time. That makes sense. So, so I can change this to to four, and then it will become a lot faster. And you can change it until it kind of gets its own tone. It becomes its own tone, its own square wave. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I think actually one of the so so the first song I submitted to the REM challenge uh, 
the listening party, I, I didn't really know how to work with notes. So this is how I made notes. I just multiplied it by a lot of numbers. <laughs> I, I think it turned out quite well. But now that I know how to work with notes, I, I think I definitely have a preference for that. But just one of the use cases. Uh, so then there's the musical rest, which, which is this tilde symbol, I think. So in this case, it doesn't really do anything because, well, this, this is just the same as running this. But if I place it inside these square brackets and then add a snare drum, then you get kind of uh, on the, I don't know how to call it, but this is oh, swing, swing. But yeah. So that's one of the things you can do with a musical rest. Well, you can do a lot of things with it, but uh, I use it quite a lot like this to add, to add the swing. It's nice that I know the name now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so amazing. So, oh God, wow. There's so, now, now that there are these little building blocks, um, uh, it it really looks at music in a kind of different way, like the 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 kind of like you can just stuff this one cycle full of whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, that that's kind of I guess that's what music music notation has always been, you know, like the the or the Western music notation. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I didn't think about it like this before. I think tidal cycles changed the way I look at well, uh, how music fits into a measure. Yeah. yeah. So, so moving on to the next piece of notation, you have these pointy brackets, I'm going to call them. And uh, so, so we have the same pattern as before, but this time uh, with, within the square brackets, I put some pointy brackets where I instruct tidal cycles that it can uh, alternate between a bass drum and a rest. So the first cycle, it will play a bass drum. The next cycle, it will play a rest or nothing. Then it will go back to the bass drum, go back to the rest. So it sounds like this. So this is kind of how you can add variation to your song or pattern. Uh, so here I added also a clap. So now the pattern is unique over three cycles. Uh, you can also put square brackets within pointy brackets within square brackets. So now you have, of, of course you can. <laughs> you can you can do a, you can do anything. Uh, so. So now we have this, we were at this uh, swing rhythm, which kind of sounds nice, I think. And then I want to add some hi-hat so I can move to the next track and on track three, I add four hi-hats spread out evenly over this the same cycle as, as this one. So then you get something like this. But this is not really the most efficient way to work with your tracks because then you get a lot of tracks quite easily if you have each uh, each part of a drum on a separate track then you're quite quite quickly you're out of the 16 tracks so one thing you can do is put everything in between square brackets and then use a comma so uh Putting everything in between square brackets. Well, you can do you can do it here as well, and then nothing really happens. But when something is within square brackets, then you may use a comma. And when you use a comma, it's kind of the same. It will sound exactly the same as here, but it will play it on one track instead. And I can add some more things with more commas. So the so that's the hi hats there. Yeah, the hi hats are combining with the bass drum facing scenario. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so you have this pattern, and at the same time you have this pattern 
Okay. And if I if I add another comma, then I have another pattern playing at the same time. I can also play then I think a, a three thirds. What is uh, the common? Can... What is the common? Uh, so so this was what we saw above here. So you have the the auto oh. folder, oh. and then the colon is is referring to which file to play. So in this case, uh, you play the it's second different hi variations of hi hat sounds. Yeah, well, this was my understanding, but then when I play it, I don't think HH stands for hi hat because it sounds completely different than a hi hat. So I can just show it. I can I can play these uh, like separately. Then then you can hear that these are definitely not hi hats. Or maybe they are. More like but... an 80s record scratch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think they sound nice with the, the rest of the pattern. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is the basic notation of creating uh, rhythmic patterns. And I think they, they can be a bit hard to understand, but they they are really the basis of making music in title cycles. So you can do a lot of things with them. You create a lot of variation with these pointy brackets. Uh, yeah, so, so this was just to recap. And if everything's clear, I wanted to show a bit about the difference between samples and synths. So are, are there any questions at this point? Uh, none that are coming up. I'm uh the can you get uh with the triangular brackets the play, yeah what is if that I again can, so oh yeah so 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 let's variation? see if I if I uh have these two yes. and I put them in between triangular that uh brackets I don't know. I don't know. Uh -huh. then it will choose or alternate between right. those two. So oh, if okay. I run this, then it will basically slow down. So okay. we'll first cycle will play this one, second cycle will play this one. And over here, it it chose between, I don't know. Yeah, it cho chooses between a bass drum and a rest. So, so if, if you, you, if you, okay, sorry, sorry. If you go hi-hat colon two, and then you multiply by two, yeah. that, could you do that? Yeah. Then it would play two per cycle. <laughs> yeah. So and then it would so, alternate with the the one hi hat three or HH three. Yeah. So so it it's separated by uh, the square bracket. So it would play hi hat two hi hat two, and the next cycle it would play hi hat three. Right. Does that okay. Make sense? So the square bracket creates a unit creates a like a chunk yeah. yeah exactly yeah uh and it overlays it over whatever level of cycle it's at. <laughs> oh, yeah <God>. exactly <laughs> uh -huh. amazing all right so so we'll move on to the samples for the synths then uh so so we saw this auto and it has uh a number that specifies which file to play, but then I can also say which note it should play. So before we had the, the rhythmic structure inside the sound, in this case, we have it in the note uh, mini notation. So here I specify I want to play the first file in the auto folder and then I want the notes C F A and C6. Uh so I can just show you what it sounds like. So it, it just changes the the playback speed of the of the original file. Right. So, is so the, that's is the default C? Is it always C? Uh I think in the so so when you download title cycles, you get a lot of pre-recorded sample sets, right? And then you usually it's C, 
but uh other samples it's never <laughs> like it's whatever no. the sample note <laughs> yeah so so then it assumes it's a c but right. that's no, no so it's a fake most c. of the case yeah it's not really yeah. a c yeah so then it converts from c but it isn't c so then then you get strange things i think you can specify which was the original note of of the recording yeah but that's something to be uh, worry about. Amazing. So, yeah, so then continue. when you have, sorry, what was there a question? No, no, no question. We'll continue, please. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, so then you have these synthesizers. So these ones are generated just on the fly. And there, there it's always the, when you say, I want the note D, then it's always the note D. Well, unless someone defined the synthesizer in a, unexpected way but let, let's assume for now that's always listening to wh whatever note you put in it so i can play the super piano and i can say which note it should play i can also say which number it should play but this doesn't really have any effect so for a synthesizer there's not really a folder where it can choose which file to play so yeah, so you can specify a number, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, and then there's also a way to add new synthesizer. So I have a very small example of a synthesizer script. So uh, I'm not really an expert on this, but this is some uh, definition I stole from the internet. <laughs> and I can, I can run it in... Uh, well, the program that interprets title cycles, I can run it here and it says synthef. It says, also says error because I just ran this line first, but I think everything should be good now. So if I go back here and I define the synthesizer as pipsol plug, then I have a new, new synthesizer. <laughs> So I, 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 I like, I quite like this stolen synthesizer stuff, <laughs> but there, there are a lot of sounds and well, I, I haven't focused on it, but if, if you, if you change things to this, you can change the entire synthesizer sound. So I think, I think this is pretty interesting and powerful aspect of tidal cycles as well. So yeah, that's the basics about samples and synths and how they differ and are the same so then i wanted to show some immediate effects so i have here again this uh what was it called swing pattern with the hi-hats and then i apply some uh reverb to it so i first run it without and then and i have a lot of reverb so uh, you have the name of the, the effect, you have the, the brackets, but you can also run it without brackets. So if, I, if I run it like this, oh, then, then it's unexpected. Well, I shouldn't have tried it. But let's just, uh, well, the thing I wanted to show actually was that you, that you can also I use a mini pattern, mini notation inside the effect. So I have the same pattern here, but then I say the first half of the cycle, I want a lot of reverb. The second half of the cycle, I want no reverb at all. So then it sounds quite interesting. So that's one way to combine these mini notations uh, and one thing to note is that it always takes the rhythmic structure from the most left part of your uh, of your piece of code that you that you are executing so uh, so when I would do it like uh, this and I only have just one 
bass drum, then it will always have reverb because there's only one sound. Right. It's, there's, yeah, it's not cycling. It, like it's it's starting the cycle again every time. Yeah. So it yeah, so, starts at nine point nine. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if so, the way I I visualize visualize it for myself is that if there was something here, then it would apply reverb, but there isn't anything there. Uh, so that's a reverb effect. You can also use a delay effect, which sounds pretty cool. Uh, and here I, I do need the brackets because otherwise uh, it will it will run into errors, or at least I expected it. Maybe, maybe I don't need it. <laughs> oh, okay. I think I need to. Did you kill it? Yeah, I, I did. How did you, how did you kill it? Uh, I, I probably... just, I just muted my sound. Oh, you did. Okay. But uh, there's no way to, to like cancel the, 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 you write the, the way uh, how do you cancel it again. Mute or. Yeah, hush? you can, you can do hush, but. I think it was, so I think I, I do, so I'm just going to stop Super Collider real quick, but I think the the thing that, what, what happened was that I specified a delay greater than one. Right. So, so one is the maximum, basically. So if, if I make it greater than one, it just then defaults it will, to one. <laughs> no, I think it will add um, on to it. So. I have okay, I have right. my delay from the first cycle and then it adds on to the next and the next one, the next one, the next one. So it gets bigger and bigger every time. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yes. Oh man. Okay. So, so that's like Yeah, so I, I should have maybe tried delay tried this in, before. In a universe so now you know where everything goes backwards. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm just gonna <laughs> keep these these brackets here for now. So let's see. Yes. Okay. It you 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 do hear the sounds again, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm happy the delay stopped. I was kind of worried for a bit. Uh. So one one example I I wanted to show was uh you can use a a DJ filter on your drums and I think this makes it sound quite nice. But especially when you make this increase or decrease over time. So that's what I've done here. Uh, so within the brackets, I put in more code uh, to specify what the value of this DJ filter should be. So I say slow four, which means over four cycles in a range between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5, follow a sine wave. So it will just alternate between, or alternate, it will gradually move between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. So then it sounds like this. Oh, but it's also panning. Yeah, that, that was the, the- The bottom one, yeah. Yeah, so the bottom one is in one cycle, twice following a sign between one and two, so left and right. So yeah, I think I've, I, I've been using this DJ filter combining with some kind of sign or you can use a saw as well. I think it's really a, a good way to make that's, things sound nice. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, uh, <laughs> so instead of like, auto, like drawing a visual line, you just like say okay every so and so cycles it ex <laughs> extend to this point it was like what okay yeah, yeah. wow yeah okay. yeah i i think this is one one of the powers of tidal cycles that you can really in just a few lines of code you can specify what sounds to make but for uh, a pattern that changes over a really long time so it's unique each cycle for well as long as you specify this 
the slow button in this case. Uh, so you can also write your own effects or reuse someone else's open source effects. So I think this is one of the cool things that Tidal Cycles is open source that, that you can also modify it and maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, create some little bits effect. I, so I, I do need to define this little bits effect to work, but it, it's something that you can do. If, if you feel like some effect is missing, you can try and figure out how to make it yourself. And and how, how would, what programming language would people do that in or does it matter or what would, uh, is it in the yeah, title so, cycles thing? So title cycles itself is written in Haskell, which is a programming language. Uh, and then a lot of effects I think are written in uh, this super collider. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if super collider is a, language but that, that was what we saw here this so how the uh, synth is defined uh, you can also add uh, some support for certain effects i think if you were to write your own effect you would also write it in this scd super collider uh, type of language if that makes sense Oh, totally. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I guess so. Uh, um, and it's not, it's not like extensive code. It's not like pages of it, of it. Like you could probably pick, pick your way through it and figure out what is happening in a, in a synthesis synth or something and uh, yeah. change some parameters and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. With, with this type of code. So, so I haven't written any synthesizer definitions from it by myself, but yeah, you, you can just try something like what happens if I change this a little bit and then hear what it sounds like. Yeah, that, that's definitely possible. But yeah, if you if you change something like uh, the delay, then, then do use these brackets because, because it can. So so over here, it, the delay kind of exploded. So right, sometimes yes. it's, it's, it's also good to you kind of know what will happen, but yeah, you can always just quit Super Collider and restart it, and then it's all fine. <laughs> There's no, yeah, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Um, and pile as many things into brackets as possible. <laughs> yeah, some, I think, I think at bracket. some point, at some point, your computer will maybe say this is too much, but might die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but I, I think. I think I tried it like uh, one thousand, and then it sound it doesn't sound really nice anymore. No, but no, but my computer was fine. Or oh, was it like it a still is fine? It's like a really high pitched sound or something. Or I, I think it was, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we won't do that to people. I, I'm I'm not gonna try. <laughs> uh, I I I actually want to move to the After Effects. Absolutely, yes. Please, please do. So. I'm just gonna set the cycles per second to one for now, so make it a bit more fast. And then, uh, well, I'm gonna go back to, to this very basic pattern. And then I can apply this after effect saying, this should be spread out over two cycles. So, Kind of what you expect. You can also do the reverse. You can make it twice as fast or four times as fast compared to slow two. And you can also use hurry. So then it makes it faster, but also changes the pitch. <laughs> so uh, another after effect you can use is every. So we saw this in the example as well. So you have every tour cycle, I want the pattern to be reversed. So it will play this twice. And then the third time around, it will play hi-hat, snare drum, hi-hat, bass drum. So it sounds like this. Ping pong. It would ping pong. Oh, hang on. Sorry. I'm... 
<laughs> I'm loving this. I'll, I'll shut up here. So, so, so you can combine actually this every with itself. So kind of like the square brackets, you can also nest the every function or well, maybe nest. No, I would rather say combining. So in this case, we have the every third cycle, it should reverse the pattern. So just as we had before, but then also every second cycle, it should hurry the cycle with a factor two. But then every fourth cycle, it should slow the cycle down by two. So it will combine all these things together. And in the end, I think you get three times, two times four uh, unique cycles before you hear. It. So yeah, so many cycles before you hear it repeat. So I can just show you what it sounds like. So I'm not sure if it repeated already. Uh, yeah, yeah, hard I, to tell I at think... this point. The brain is like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really easy to to make things that that are not really you can't really follow anymore. That's also kind of nice, I think. So that's the every effect. But there's also an effect called off, which kind of makes a cannon out of your sound. I've been using this a lot. I, I quite like it. So I'm going back, back to this super vibe instrument, which just plays some notes. And I'm gonna play it at 0 0.8. And then I can add this after effect. So it's a bit tricky to understand maybe, but if you break it up by pieces, then it's understandable. So here I say, I want the effect of, so the effect called off, and I want it to be applied with an eight note uh, or an eight of a cycle uh, delay, kind of. So after, with an offset of one eighth of a cycle, I want to apply this effect. And this effect is increase the note by six half steps. So in in this case you will get instead of four notes you will get eight notes per cycle so i think what, what happens is you get the c and then you get a c minus six half steps a d and then a d minus six half steps so and so on does that make sense I th yeah, I think I got it. I think so. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so, so I can take this this part, but I can also apply it to more complex patterns. So this is uh, eight notes already. So then every note will be. So I will still have eight notes in total, but two played at the same time. And I can also combine it with the square brackets and then it really gets an interesting rhythmic effect. And then you can even pattern this note parameter. So, so here I can say first cycle to make a shift of seven half steps, then six, then 12, and then minus one. I think it's it's quite quite a cool effect. It's one of the effects I have been using quite a lot as well. So, so off so off here is off so it it is what is off doing there? What is off? every so, one eighth of a cycle it's doing something, but I don't know what. Yeah, so Every one eighth of a cycle, it uh, adds another note to the pattern. So, oh. so if I if I take this example, yeah, and then I I say I want I want it just to be half a note 
half a step down. Mm -hmm. So so maybe I, I can I can make it uh, even okay. I can make it a bit more simple. If oh, I remove on on YouTube, someone says uh, tuber uh, tuberculosis fish says off off like offset. So like moving it's back. it's offset compared yeah so you have this note uh -huh. which is played on the first quarter and then i have an offset of one eight right so so if i if i put zero here i think yeah i think that's the the most the most uh, easy example if i put okay. zero here then i would get c then, then it would be the same as not applying Anything, this off yeah. but then i would get this it would repeat the note um, okay so so this would be placed Can inside here by off and this would so every second note would uh -huh. be would be played because there was a note before it and then off applied this effect to it but there is no effect because it says change the note by zero steps. Okay. All right. So, so does it make sense? <laughs> but so if you were to change, I'd like maybe I maybe if I heard it, if you yeah. could play it like an example of the with the zero, start with zero. Yeah. So it's going back. Yeah, it's got kind of unexpected because it's, it's yeah, it seems to be ping ponging back and. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's doing something. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, tuberculosis fish on YouTube says that he understands it, so or they understand it, so. Uh, All right. <laughs> we can. Well, continue I, I i just wanted to demonstrate i learned that, that i learned a... slowly but over like it, i just like to absorb it all and then at one time at one moment i'll i'll snap in and i'll know everything well it's definitely not essential for the rest of the workshop it's it was just a cool effect that i thought this this is really one of the things that that you can do and have fun with title cycles but the rest of the the workshop will not depend on understanding the off function so, so I will move on to chords and arpeggios. Uh, so, so we had this kind of simple pattern with the super vibe. And I can also specify that I don't want notes, but I want full chords. So I say I want it to spread it out over four cycles. So each cycle, it will play one of these chords. And then I apply this DJ filter because otherwise I think it sounds a bit too sharp. So then it sounds like this. But you can use a lot of different chords. So these are all the chords that are supported or known by tidal cycles. And it knows a lot more than I do. <laughs> so just to show you what you can do i i picked some at random and placed them in here so it's d time. minor d diminished <laughs> dm1 dm11 what is that mean? Oh, well we can we can try i can try try and play that which one did you want here d oh it doesn't add uh, d and then the d m d is a good key d d whatever d diminished d uh um well i i, I like to <laughs> d minor pick... add 11 oh that's what it is well that, that that's what it sounded like wow so i i picked a few ones just to show you how to work with chords so i i still spread each chord out or round uh, note over one cycle so i have c then d a and e but uh, 
C is played four times, and then the D has some variations. And for the, the same thing, but then for A and E. So if I play this, it sounds quite strange, but I think you can do quite interesting things with it. Uh, but for now, I'm going to stick to just uh, the chords that I am more familiar with. And I'm going to arpeggiate them. Down. So I can take this pattern and I add arp. And I say I want to arpeggiate it upwards. So I guess from the lower notes to the higher notes. And then I add this four to specify that I want four notes per chord. So then it sounds like this. Lovely. Yeah. I can make it a bit more interesting by variating which type of uh, arpeggio it should play. So I can play the first one up, then down, then diverge and converge. Or I can apply this really confusing effect that plays back the arpeggio or whatever pattern you played, but backwards and switching between left and right. This this sounds. Oh yeah, let's do you, it. You can you can't really <laughs> hear what's going on, but it sounds really nice. I think. And then. I decided I should try to make it a bit more strange even. So here I alternate between down and pinky up and pinky up, down, well, let's just run it. Go for it, yeah, you don't need So I think that was the pinky up, down. And I can also give more structure to these chords to make it really weird. <laughs> Instaprog. <laughs> so yeah, you can you can do really weird and super fast things with this uh, so, oh, oh, sorry the command slow that that means that that does that change it to chords is that what you were explaining uh, before no no uh okay. so so in the beginning i had this uh this pattern but yes. then i that's all so single I can, notes. Uh, well, here it's already chords. Uh huh. Okay. So, oh. so if oh. I play it. Oh, I see. I see. Whenever you use that that that, that yes, phrase, the, it's a uh, yes. Of course. Yeah. Yes. So they're so they're chords. I, they're not. <laughs> if they're not notes. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I can I can play notes and then I can add this and then right. it becomes a chord. Uh, okay. Okay. So all so right. the slow four was just to make it uh more well Variation. better audible i guess so so if i play it like this then i think it will be a bit too much maybe sure. especially when you start arpeggiating over it so right especially when when you use like this really complex <laughs> yes i think i think no uh, word wrap here it's just like scrolling off into the distance to the right um yeah so tuberculosis fish asked a question about can this can these patterns be exported to MIDI? Probably. Um, seems, seems like it might be complicated, but possible. I I think there there is actually a MIDI integration with Tidal Cycles. So so this uh, the creator of Tidal Cycles has made this tutorial series, uh, which are. Are really nice actually that that's where i got all my title cycle knowledge from and one of the tutorials was on working with midi but yeah, I, I don't really work with midi so I, I haven't tried it out myself but i i can uh so i have a link to the tutorials in the end and i can share the slides uh somewhere on the discord i guess yeah totally but i can patch them to the YouTube archive as well too. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so I I think 
there are possibilities, but I haven't tried it myself. So, so then moving on from arpeggios and chords, I, I have this one last bit that I wanted to show about compositioning and structuring uh, your life coding song. And I wanted to show it by showing an example of a song that, that I life coded. Well, I think, I think it will be part of the RPM album this year. Uh, but first I want to show some tools that you can use when you're making a full sound or a full song. So one useful thing is the do command. So this is something you can use to um, really uh, run multiple lines at the same time. So so if I have this bass drum and snare drum and I uh, run it, I select it all and I run it, then I get an error. But when I use the do, then it works. So So I can put a lot of lines in here and make a lot of different um applications to my song at once uh another thing you can use is the solo command so now you just have the second track and now they're both back uh so you can also silence one of the uh tracks so i will i will show this in action in a bit but just to Give you some familiar, familiar familiarity with it. So I can say this one should be silent. Uh, you can also fade in uh, a track and you can run something once. So then it's not really playing on a track, but just once. So it's played and then it's gone. So I think. These are the tools that are useful for making a song. So I wanted to start with this arpeggiating uh, Super 5 pattern that we had going before, which I quite like. And then I'll add some drum to it. So you have the pointy brackets here, which lets it choose between one hi-hat, two hi-hat, or maybe even four hi-hats. But then I add some bass sounds. Then I fade in this, well, it's, it's a super piano, some chords. You have to do a bit of timing, but you can you can specify this to run once. Now I have to constrain to think when I am going to change yeah. it. <laughs> so now I've added this jux ref to this first pattern. So now I've soloed the fourth and fifth track, but the fifth That's one is not playing anything at all. So I'm just going to edit it's the breakdown. This is the breakdown. It's a breakdown. Yeah. Everything back because I unsoloed these parts. So I will, I will just add some vocals to it. And then three, some semi random piano. Two, three, four, 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 and some glitchy sounds. Apply this DJ filter to 
all of the tracks simultaneously. One, two, three. This is oh yeah, this yeah. Gating. So here I change the playback speed of the samples, so you can hear the the drums, especially changing in pitch. And you can make it really strange by changing the cycles per second. Following a sign that's following a soul. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so be warned. This, this is kind yeah, of this strange. This is messed up. Yeah. This is gonna be bad. This is gonna be wild. Oh. He's going over hills. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is the soul. So now we're back to normal. Yeah. Amazing. So. So that's kind of how, <laughs> how I go about it, making songs in tidal cycles. So there there are a lot of things you can do with it. I think it's it's really quite powerful uh, once you get a bit of the basics, uh, or even with just one of the basics. I think it's really easy to to make your first sound and then make some really strange sounds from this first pattern. Uh, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Uh, tuberculosis fish on uh, on YouTube says, "Just amazing." Wow. <laughs> oh, thanks as well. Um, yeah, gosh, wow. There's so much. Like, I feel like I, yeah, you've grabbed onto some of these chunks, like at these chunks of ideas that that are that you can now you just like throw them like Legos or something. You throw them together. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So make whatever. So I I try to to like go for all the building blocks, but every block like you can go into a lot of detail and and for me that helps to get a lot of inspiration as well. So so each thing I'm kind of working out how it works, but then at the same time making songs with the things that I just learned. I think I think that's a nice way to make music, make new things. Yeah, to constantly be challenging yourself or like le learning at the same time as uh, exploiting your skills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think when I compare it to playing the guitar, so then when when I was learning to play it, I was definitely not focusing on also writing songs at the same time, which maybe in hindsight would have also been interesting. But with Tidal Cycles, I think it's it's really really easy to to do the those two things at the same time to learn it and to make songs with it right I, well i guess do people uh, people share code i guess or care, share patterns and yeah there, uh, there there's a so you have github the place where people share their open source code so i i shared a few songs of mine i, I tried to share all of them but i'm well i'm a bit behind on it but uh yeah, a lot of people do share how they make their songs. And also when, when you watch those videos of them, then usually in the background, you see what what they are writing exactly. So yeah, there's a lot to be learned from that. Right. And well, I guess it would it would it go against the the spirit of the live coding aspect where you could sequence it? Like you just, could you like create a, set up something that, that triggers certain certain things at different times, or does that go against the the whole idea? <laughs> no, I think I think so. The idea is well for me. It's just a, a new way to make new music and experimental music. So, uh, and and I feel like the the live coding community is also really exploring new types of sound. Mm -hmm. So I. I cannot imagine them being against any any type of new experiment. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. This is the point. It's, uh, it's not live enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that's that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So so I think uh, so so the way I I work with live coding, maybe, maybe it's that's not even really live coding, but more 
semi-live coding because usually I uh, I start with like I start from scratch, but when I record a song, then then I already have a plan like what I'm going to, going to do. But I think some people are really experienced with this live coding, and they can just start from from out of nowhere and create amazing songs just out of nowhere. So I think I think if you the official definition of live coding may be more a bit more towards that side, but yeah, we're making music, so so you can just do whatever you like yourself, right? Yeah, there are no rules. There are no rules. Yeah. This is yeah, this is so cool. Uh, this is so so cool. Mikey on YouTube says it. It'd be nice to uh, be able to just write. B minor seven add nine flat five in MIDI <laughs> instead of having to remember what all those notes are. Yeah, I think I think that's how it started actually because you can you can create these chords by using these square brackets and then specify which notes to play simultaneously with commas. But uh, that gets really messy quickly. Yes, right. So so then someone. I'm I'm not sure if it was in the first version of Tidal Cycles or someone decided it should be added, but someone decided there should definitely be these types of chords that you can just type in yourself without the square brackets and commas. Amazing. That's so cool. Uh, is there like where where can people find out more about this? The the, the uh, Tidal Cycles. Yeah, uh, site titlecycles.org. So, so I have some some links. So you have the titlecycles.org. Uh, there's a lot of information there, uh, and there's this link to the tutorial, which I really can recommend if you want to get into title cycles. And I also have this link to Strudel. It's kind of a version of title cycles. But it runs in the browser, so it's really easy to get started with. But the syntax is just a slightly bit different. So it's inspired on title cycles, I think. And th there's also this link to uh, when you want to live code visuals. So this was what we saw in the videos in the beginning. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, you can also write code and create visuals. Uh, uh, you can do it in in the same program, kind of in the same program. Uh, right. I, I did a, I I did try it out, uh, and I yeah, it's it was quite a bit more complex I thought compared mm -hmm. to Tidal Cycles, but it was it was quite a nice experience to to be able. To, well, once I connected those two, then I thought it was really working well. Right, so, the visuals and connecting the visuals and the uh, uh, yeah, the sounds as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I said something up that like that was uh, triggering on each bass drum and snare drum. So it was like a circle was getting a step bigger on each bass drum, but smaller on each snare drum. So slowly it was growing throughout the song. I think it was <laughs> quite quite a nice that, experience. That's great. Oh man. Well, my gosh, my gosh, everybody's uh, got to do this now. That's that's what the next seven days. Next seven days got to be that. Uh, are you so I'm I, I'm not interrupting. Are you uh, are you at the end here now? Uh, or is this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there was one one more thing I, I wanted to mention that uh, or one idea I had that this uh, this website where you can uh, run title cycles simultaneously so so you can okay. open a room and then multiple users can join it and put in their patterns so i thought maybe that would be a cool thing to try now but yeah but absolutely that, i'm ready to go <laughs> so so i put a few examples to, just to get so someone could get started with okay uh, all so right, I, hello. I, I can I can open a room and then people yeah, can maybe join. you do that. So and uh like if you could uh estuary uh, McMaster. Yeah, should I should I share this link? Dot C A slash so 
So I, I think you can join the RPM room. Okay. And and then the password would be RPM in in small uh, lowercase. All right. Perfect. High security. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it will exist for for one hour, and then I think it, it's <laughs> yeah, it's removed. Right. <laughs> So uh, how this works is you can select that you want uh, a mini title interpreter, and then, uh, well, you can specify the pattern, but you don't need the D1 and the dollar because it's already uh, it's already specified which track because uh, there are six tracks in total. So so if I want to make a sound here, I can do something like this and I should get a bass drum and a snare drum. Yes. And I think everyone who joins this should then also hear the bass drum and snare drum and can add whatever they like in the yeah. I'll just set all of these to mini title. So to be honest, I I never tried it until this afternoon. <laughs> But I think I think it could be cool. It looks very. It's very uh, the green and white or the green and black. It's very uh, early nineties. Yeah, aesthetic too as well. <laughs> I like it. It's from McMaster University, I suppose. This is uh, uh yeah. In Canada. Seems like it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So if anyone wants to to make a sun, feel free. Uh, is anybody in? There? Yeah, well, Mikey's in there. Do we? Yeah, I think Metamir. There, there, yeah, there are there are a number a, of people. <clears throat> you start us off. Like put in put in right. something. Uh, I'll, I'll put I'll put in the the many hi hats. Uh, variation. Yeah, I already forgot the basic commands. Tubi says, <laughs> "Me too." <laughs> Yes. All right, so maybe this is already a bit complex. I can I can put a few examples in the in the chat. Then then you can try and modify it. So so maybe someone wants to modify this to an uncomfortably high number, or change this to another snare drum, or someone can add like a. A, a base pattern. Oh, you so you can edit that that yeah, text I, I, as I, well. I, oh, I it's, think it's so. Like a, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does that make sense? Put his so think, no. Yeah, so so now we'll look for the instrument A, E, and D. So if you want to change oh, the, the instrument, note, oh I see. Okay. Mm, the note is different. So so if you want to change the note, I can you have to write note. I see. Yeah. So uh like this and then I don't know A E F D. So now we'll get the second. Oh, so I I see someone added uh, something in the third third track. So there's a D one and uh, a dollar sign. So you do not need the dollar sign and the D one in this version. things happening now yeah it's getting louder i just i realized that i put the snare bass drum and the snare in the same spot as the other people oh all oh, right so now the the lesson on effects again or that dj filter that you like uh, yeah 
the DJ filter is not not available. In it's not available. Okay. So, no, no. So this is kind of like a, a subset of uh, of title cycles. So it's called mini title. I think it's quite quite a challenge to really run title cycles in the browser. Mm, okay. Oh, a clap! Oh, no, that's a good clap. So that I I can add some effects to this that I think are in there. So maybe the the foul effect. Oh. Wow. So let's hope it's it's in there. But it's kind of like a filter that changes uh, that plays back as if someone was speaking the letter A O or U. Ah. Yes. Oh. Quite nice. Wow. That's that's clever. That's a clever. Yeah. Man. I'm not sure how how they exactly did it, but it's a really interesting effect. Um, it's hurt. Gosh, what what is it called? Oh gosh, there's a word for it. So, if you want to sound super piano, then the super piano should be in in between quotes. So, if I take this one, then it should be. Um, oh yes, some melody is coming in. Brilliant. I love it. Yeah. I think <laughs> there, there are some examples as well on this uh, this website. Let's see. Uh, the tutorials for title cycles. Yeah, there are some things you can just try that are maybe give some inspiration. I think someone has already had some knowledge about title cycles. Really good base. Yeah, where is that? Is that in the upper right there? This is, this is syntax is. So I think this is the clap sound. Oh, okay, yes. But probably it needs a, a a hashtag between the sound and the note. So the note disappeared. No. But if you want to apply a note, then you can add a hashtag in there. So if I, if I put it here, then I think the, the bass sound is coming from here. Because this is a E2, A2, so that's pretty low.
maybe the bass was coming from here because we have a speed of random plus 0 0.5 so it could be quite quite low so now we have a bass drum coming from the left and right Trance. Oh, there's a yeah. so the so explain so the the sound on the bottom right. What is going on there? There's a sound bass so, drum times two. And it's panning. So there's That's a the panning. Yeah. So there's a bass drum playing twice a cycle, and then the panning is taking this quite complex uh, form of first following a square, but then I think on the second half it changes to a sign. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But I, I think the effect is, in the end, that it will just be left, right, left, right. Yes, right, or yes. At least that's what I hear. Yeah. Where, where, where that sound is coming from? Uh, it's the clap. It's the very. Uh, it's, uh, it's ah. the speed. ah, the clap of 0 0.2. Yeah, that's. It's a really slow clap. now <laughs> it might be on, it might be on there this is amazing this is so cool yeah I wasn't sure what to expect when starting this room but I, I really like it and it's all being recorded right so we all yes. have one extra song for our record <laughs> yes right it's yeah it'll be release a single or an EP probably I mean I'm just play it a couple times you know? yeah orbit is that a sample uh, so orbit I think usually is another way of specifying which track you want to play something on okay so I'm not sure if it's applicable in this setting in this mini title so one interesting effect you can apply to the shrimps is this legato. So then you make it really, really short. So when you say legato is 0 0.25, then it, uh, every, right. every sound that's played can only, well, it should fit to the cycle. It cannot, cannot extend it, but if it does extend, then it cuts off I think in this case half. So, uh, oh, the drum has gone. Okay, never, never mind then. I wanted to show an example to the drum. That's right. Maybe it's not an effect in here. I don't think it, it applies. Sounds like someone's playing on a keyboard. <laughs> yeah.
boy. sound in the upper right yeah maybe we can make this a bit lower Speed has changed on the hi hats, so it's lowered to 0.5. Yeah. Oh, I think I think that that's a nice five. Those low low hi hats. After all the, so at the end of your pattern. to be a dollar sign but then it could work oh my gosh i'm pretty 
pretty lost, but I'm just I'm just taking little segments of someone else's code and, and applying it to other things. Yeah, I, well, I think that that is exactly what life coding is. <laughs> Yeah, so you can use this random function of it basically everywhere where you put something in between brackets. I, I guess it takes a random value between 0 and 1 in this case. Kind of like the sign. something that applies to the speed okay oh it's, it's applies to the speed okay yeah so i think here now we have reverse i had first the snares of picks this is cool actually yes yeah when in doubt go slow or go backwards <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I think I think in terms of the workshop, I think we should probably sign it off there, but we can keep going. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a good idea. So, so I'm just just going to stop the share of my screen. I have no idea if I can mute it. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, thank you very much, Felix. This has been uh, really, really super cool. Uh, yeah. Thanks for yeah. Thanks for approaching me to do this and uh, sharing it with the RPM people. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. I, it was a, a lot of fun. And I hope that some people are interested in life coding now i uh, think yeah i think people got the got the bug they, they, it, they it, so, it does sound it does sound like it yeah <laughs> right the way they're testing they're just like throwing everything that they can at it. uh yeah that's amazing amazing um and yeah uh, do you have anything else that you'd like to add uh after all that uh well, I, I guess good luck to everyone with their, their album this month. Yes, there's so much time left. There's lots of time. Don't don't look at the calendar. <laughs> uh, it uh, It is over a week. You have over a week. And uh, it's a week and two days, I think, for, for the complete uh, submission. But... Um, uh, good luck to everybody out there, and uh, yeah, if people can find where uh, uh, people can find you uh, at, uh, I'll share the links in the uh, in the videos, and um, yeah, listen listen to Felix's music. It's uh, it's it's always surprising, and it's all it's like there's there, there's so much variety in what you make as well. That I really appreciate that. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, yeah, so everybody, thank you very much, and uh, until next time. <laughs>